Yes, we have a really interesting debate and discussion with two important regional organizations. So I will invite on the stage Mr. Mikhail Christides, the Secretary General of Black Sea Economic Cooperation Organization, and also Ambassador Nasir Aminu, Director of D8 Organization, organization for Economic Cooperation. Hello, how are you? Good, very well, thank you. Are you tired? Yes, ah. yes, very well, thank you. The truth is that we are all tired, but also we are enjoying this debate and uh, we'll, for sure, we'll share some important inputs with our public and with our friends from the touristic sector. Well, mainly we are much wiser now than we were in the morning oh. after all these distinguished speakers that took the floor. I agree with you. So, I have a lot of questions for you, so get ready. For you. <laughs> My dears, we passed through difficult times all over the world, not national, not regional, regional, all over the world we passed through difficult, difficult times. Where our life was affected, our economy, in fact, all sectors of our economies were affected, and in, in special, the travel and hospitality sector was the most affected sector all over the world. So, so what represented for the Black Sea countries and also for the D8 countries this pandemic period? Mr. Christides, you have the floor. Well, first of all, let me thank the organizers for inviting me to this very, very important uh, event. Um, of course, it is a bit difficult to talk here in a beautiful Bodrum on a sea that is so far away from the beautiful Mediterranean waters, and in fact a sea that carries this, let me say, peculiar name, Black Sea. I would prefer it with its old name, which is, was called the Welcoming Sea. Exactly. I agree with you. So, uh, you know, the Black Sea region uh, is uh, has been the cradle of uh, civilizations, religions, and cultures for thousands of years. So it carries a very rich cultural heritage. It is only normal that a regional organization like ours, which has been established in order to promote the economic cooperation among its member states and beyond, would very much care also about tourism and culture. And as you said, uh, tourism was uh, very severely hit also in the Black Sea region, perhaps even especially in the Black Sea region, because uh, touristically speaking, it is not as developed as uh, the other European seas or even seas uh, farther away. So uh, the impact uh, was great. And as a regional organization, we started from the very beginning to try and motivate our member states to find common collective solutions to the issues. First of all, we convened uh, at least three or four, unfortunately, virtual meetings. I will interrupt you because yes. I want to discuss, I, I want to have a very specific discussion about this subject, but I will uh, ask also Mr. Aminu to give me, let's say, a little bit of uh, general context of the situation of DA countries during this pandemic period. Thank you, thank you very much. Uh, first and foremost, I want to thank uh, the World Tourism Forum Institute for organizing this event. It, it's a, a great honor and privilege for me to be here. And uh, I also want to commend uh, the existing cooperation between the D8 organization and the World Tourism uh, uh, Institute. Uh, it's also a celebratory delight for me to be in this great city. And uh, I commend the world-class facilities put uh, in our, at our disposal for this meeting. Now, uh, the pandemic came at a very bad time for the DEAD organization because uh, tourism is an important uh, pr priority uh, area of cooperation for us. Uh, uh, 
And uh, in 2019, we, we had a, the, a ministerial meeting on it. Uh, it. It was at that time that it was de designated as a priority area of cooperation. And work started. We adopted what we call DED Comprehensive Strategy on Tourism. Uh, we, we, it was um, designed to help member states to um, uh, improve their tourism sectors through experience sharing, especially for member, member countries that are well advanced in the sector like Turkey, Indonesia, and uh, Malaysia. Then we have other countries that are not doing very well like Nigeria, Pakistan, Iran, and Bangladesh. So uh, immediately we started, then the COVID came and you know, put SPANA in the works of, of the organization. And uh, the consequence, consequential adversities are known to everybody here. Uh, even the, uh, the holder of the tourism crown, Turkey, was badly affected, and the rest is history. Yes, it's true. You both represent regional organization, and in the past I was a member of the European Parliament. So, for example, at the level of the EU, the European Parliament and European Commission decided to have a common strategy for the member states and to have also some financial support for the member states to recover from this pandemic and economic crisis and also to support the recovery of the touristic sector. And I want to ask you in this direction <clears throat> if you as organization in this period have some meetings being physical or online meetings and agreed uh, to have a certain strategy or if not a strategy to strengthen the cooperation in the direction of recovering of uh, the economic sector of the member states and also in the direction of uh, the touristic recovery of the, of the countries that are represented by these two re regional organizations. So, Mr. Amino, I will give you the floor. Yes, we, we had a senior officials meeting of tourism uh, early this year, it was hosted by Nigeria. We, it, it was to take stock of, you know, the last year, the event of last year, and to, to re-strategize and see how we go. So at the, at the meeting, we invited the DA Health and Social Protection Program, and uh, we, we agreed first and foremost to uh, have a kind of a vaccine alliance among our members so that we, we can fast track the uh, vaccination program. Uh, we have uh, member countries that are well advanced in producing vaccines like uh, Indonesia and uh, Turkey. It, it's one of the things we agreed. And we also agreed to host another meeting in, in Islamabad uh, very soon to uh, you know, to pick up the pieces and see how we, we, we b get back on track regarding the uh, strategic uh, uh, tourism strategy, implementation of the strategic uh, uh, tourism strategy. Uh, we, we, we also uh, agreed to relax visa requirements for our member countries in order to facilitate intra D8 uh, tourism because we have a lot of potential. But I, I just want to point out that D8 is not a prototype regional organization. We are, more, we are transcontinental. Exactly. Yes, it's we, true. Are, we are spread into, we, we are across continental divides. Exactly. Asia. It's Africa. even more challenging. Yes. It's so the contiguity is not there. We are, we are not yes. contiguous. So it's, it's more challenging, and we are more into economic cooperation than regional integration. Uh, so uh, I think the meeting we are going to have, the, the senior officials and ministerial meeting in Islamabad will help us to reposition the tourism sector of our national economies, and we look forward to having a double-digit growth in the next 10 years and uh, we, we want to reposition the sector, uh, one, as a t foreign exchange earner, two, as a uh, 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 um, 
employment, you know, generation strategy, and uh, three also to increase the GDP of our national economies and to promote world harmony because uh, tourism is a great uh, enabler of uh, global peace and harmony. And I think it's a huge opportunity for all the eight countries to, to have a more powerful economy because yes. for sure it will bring more added value to the economy of every country. Mr. Christides, you are, you well. are also uh, representing a challenging um, organization because you also have member states which are member of the European Union that already have a strategy yes. and, a, and a vision regard, regarding the economic recovery and also the touristic recovery. Yeah. So how you mix and integrate, let's say, the EU strategy with, let's say, the re regional strategy for developing tourism well, in the area? Me, let me respond to your previous question first and uh, underline indeed the difference um, between us uh, and uh, the D8 uh, organization because our member states have a geographic continuity, which is not the case with D8. It is the case with uh, the European Union, but there we have another huge difference, which is uh, they have much more funds at their disposal, exactly. which we do not have. And of course, we heard it from uh, the horse's mouth. I think it was Mr. Hololay talking to Mrs. Isaacs, who said that uh, the performance of the European Union during the first months was, to say the least, very disappointing, with all the restrictions and the closures of borders and everybody going alone. So us, without the funds, because money makes the world go round, we are perhaps a bit uh, later than the EU in, fin in finding a common denominator. But we are close. We are working on the so-called BISEC COVID protocols, which are a set of uh, measures, safety measures, health measures, security measures, which can be endorsed and accepted by all our member states or by the interested member states in order to recover initially flows of tourism among our member states. But of course, as Talib Rifai said in the morning, tourism will begin locally and regionally. And being a regional organization, I'm very open. We should have done more. We should have done more because you might create a touristic paradise in your country, but if you find touristic hell just in the neighboring country, all this would be an exercise in futility. So uh, we expect our member countries to show a greater sense of ownership and uh, a greater trust in this vehicle of regional cooperation, which can achieve a lot. For instance, we have a new page, a new web page, where our member states have uploaded all the necessary information concerning possible visits to them. So whoever is interested or could be interested in visiting one of our 13 member states can find already today the necessary information. And we are also discussing on a very, other, very interesting other project, which is a contest among startups in all our member states which have new and innovative solutions for the problems that uh, we are uh, obliged to address today. So we are doing a lot. We could do better. After all, the room for improvement, as they say, is the biggest room of all. Yeah. Yes, we let the room and all the doors open for improvement, but it's important that we have a beginning in this direction. So we speak, yes, it's very important, the local and national tourism, but we are speaking about uh, regional tourism right now. And because you are representing two regional and more than regional intercontinental <laughs> organization yeah. for having tourism in these uh, countries, we have to eliminate the restriction, the travel restrictions. So we have to encourage more the freedom of movement. I will make again the parallel, parallel with the European Union where we have the green digital certificate. Hopefully, hopefully we will have this certificate starting with 1st of July. 
Do you think to have a similar certificate for the Black Sea region or, and also for the D8 countries? We can, let's say, share this best practice from the EU member states and use, let's say, a similar certificate for, uh, for, this, uh, for your countries because it will be helpful not only for the regional tourism but for encouraging the tourism all over the world to have the same similarity of certificate. Yes, it's, it's in, on the agenda of our next meeting, actually. And uh, if I may add, we, we, are also, uh, we have also established what we call uh, uh, D8 designated airports in order to uh, facilitate a cross-border movement among our member countries. Um, you know, it, it's a way of helping them to circumvent the rigors of, you know, airport procedures. You know, you have fast track lanes and uh, uh, lounges, you know, so that, uh, you know, when you are traveling from one diet country to another, you, it, it's a smooth experience. Great, this is a very important uh, information and I think a useful decision. In the respect of the Black Sea countries, well, I think we are even closer of the EU and we have members of the EU, so maybe... Well, as I told you, we are working on these common BSEC COVID protocols. We have already, with the help of the WTO, achieved a certain level of maturity. But for the time being, I have to admit that what facilitates tourism among our member states is mainly the bilateral agreements among them. And there I think that this is really a pity because, uh, for instance, uh, BSEC member states are some uh, very, very important uh, uh, states in the sector of tourism. I mean, consider Russia, Turkey, the Ukraine, Greece, Bulgaria. These are all touristic heavyweights. Exactly. And uh, they could have achieved uh, much faster, perhaps even more, if uh, they would uh, cooperate regionally than, uh, um, you know, visiting each and every capital bilaterally in order to uh, um, agree on, on this uh, kind of certificates. And of course, certificates, even the certificate of uh, the EU, I mean, it helps, but it shouldn't keep people without this certificate away from traveling or it has been said here before, I mean, we should get rid of quarantines. Uh, why should somebody who comes back from Turkey go into quarantine when he returns back uh, to his home country? Uh, especially now that the vaccination is proceeding, at least in our, uh, let's say, continent or uh, geographic latitudes. So uh, there are many things to be done and they can only be done as Talib Rifai said, by coordinating and cooperating. Um, I think that this is the, the key. Yes, I agree with you and I salute Mr. Talib Rifai, a great <laughs> friend of everybody here and a very inspirational person. We all have something to learn from you, Mr. Talib Rifai. So, yes, yes, please, please. <laughs> So, very concrete, three solutions, three recommendations for the recovery of tourists in the D8 countries. Um, one is uh, a, uh, fast tracking the vaccine program, so, because that's the way out of the pandemic and uh, reducing the case count and mortality rate. Secondly, uh, working together, you know, we have uh, a lot to learn from one another and we stand to benefit more from working together. Uh, uh, then uh, the, the third one is what you spoke about now, the certification. If we can have certification, I think it will, it will facilitate uh, movement across national frontiers among our member countries. Yes, no. I agree with no. you. Mr. Ambassador? No. Well, three words, three ways. Cooperation, cooperation, cooperation. I believe that this is the key, but 
Let me just add one aspect which I believe is uh, important. The COVID has brought huge problems, but as it has been said here before, it is also a huge opportunity. Why? Because it brought all the issues and the challenges we thought we would be confronting 10 years back. We have to address them today. And I believe that one of the issues that we should address is this factor of competition. The dimension of competition is inherent in tourism. States are looking to the numbers, unfortunately, and not always to the quality, but to the quantity. And they are always comparing their numbers with the numbers of the others and measuring their success by these numbers. So I hope that uh, COVID will, uh, let me say, magically make disappear this element of competition and that uh, states uh, will uh, cooperate more because this is, I mean, we all have uh, uh, the same aim and objective. It is to leave this world uh, in a sustainable manner so that it can be enjoyed to the full extent by the generations that come next. And we cannot do so if, and let me touch upon an issue that has not been touched upon until now, perhaps it will sound as a blasphemy to talk about too much tourism during the COVID crisis. But we have to talk about that also. Last week in Venice, the population went out on its boats to keep the cruise, the behemoth cruise ships away from the lagoon. And I'm sure that when COVID slowly subsides, we will have the same, uh, uh, um, let me say, activity also in places that took place before, like Barcelona or Ibiza or Sandorini. So uh, we have to be very, very careful with all the tourism because eventually, and this COVID is underlining it, a visitor is going to a place not just to lie on a beautiful beach under the sun, but to live with the locals, to follow their traditions, to eat their food. And too much tourism will, uh, you know, will disappear all these local habits, traditions, food, gastronomy. Why? Because all locals will be so much involved in helping the numerous tourists that they will be forgetting what they were doing. So uh, this is also an issue that I would like to underline because it affects some of our members. Yes, I agree and I, I think we have to reflect on this and to find some solutions. I will tell you sincerely, with my experience in European tourism, but also with my experience as a simple tourist, for me a wonderful holiday represents a mix between having all the kind of experience, nature, gastronomy, tradition, culture, entertainment, having very quality services, and now, because we are facing this uh, situation, to have the guarantee of safety and security condition for the, every tourist. How we make that this mix of three elements assure a wonderful holiday for the tourists that, that are coming and traveling in the D8 countries? Mr. Aminu? Yes, um, you know, uh, compartmentalization of tourism is, is um, a fact now. Uh, uh, you, we, you, in some people have different, you know, um, desires when they go on tourism. But the, the uh, member states have a lot to offer for visitors. And uh, we, like I said, we are so diverse. Uh, uh, the experiences uh, vary from one country to another. And whatever it is that uh, a tourist is looking for, uh, I mean, the experience he, he wants to garner from his uh, travel is, can be met by uh, our member countries. 
Great. Mm. Mr. Ambassador, uh, Mr. Christides. Well, to, to tell you the truth, I wouldn't dare to say anything after all the advice we heard during this whole day from the experts on the issues. Let us follow their advice. Um, and uh, this is exactly also the importance of this event uh, for which I wish to thank again the organizers for inviting me to because I hope I will be able to take away and transmit also to the next, uh, to the forthcoming meetings of our member states all these ideas and uh, all these, uh, let me say, conclusions if we wish to uh, uh, have tourism regain its, uh, let me say, role as the backbone of the economy of many of our member states, but also as a very, very genuine mechanism of confidence building. Let me say it openly, the Black Sea region is becoming, unfortunately, again, the focal point of dissent, of, let me say, of conflict. We are suffering as an organization from that. So tourism and the exchange of visits between the people of our countries, this is the best way to instill a better dialogue and a better understanding among them. And then hopefully politicians will follow. Yes, I agree with you. And I will repeat that the tourism is creating bridges among us. And this is the most important thing. Now, as closing remarks, I just want to, to ask you to have some final words, maybe some inspirational words, regarding uh, the recovery of tourism and the development of tourism all over the world. Because, in fact, this is an international confer conference, and our aim is to have a more powerful tourism all over the world that will help and will bring added value to the economies or uh, to the economies of our, our countries. Mr. Ambassador Aminu. Yeah, thank you. Um, I, I want to say that uh, the, the pandemic has affected uh, the world badly. The consequential adversities are here with us. But it's not a death sentence. Uh, there is light at the end of the tunnel, and uh, if with co international cooperation among state actors, we can overcome. So uh, we'll, uh, tourism will bounce back uh, in sooner than later, and uh, it, it will continue to play the role it has been playing as, as uh, a, a, a veritable sector of national economies, and we 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 are uh, we we are not uh, daunted by the challenges we see now. We we look at future with hope and aspiration, and we believe that we will bounce back between now and 2022. And uh, you know our uh, our uh, uh, tourism sectors. Will, will, will bounce back and, you know, be a uh, foreign exchange honest for us. Thank you. Yes, Mr. Christides. Well, I think it was said also before today that traveling is inherent in the nature of us humans. We have been traveling for, uh, uh, from, you know, age in memoriam. Uh, so we will be wanting to travel. We have the hunger to travel even after COVID. Um, the only thing I would like to say is that let us travel, let us meet other people, let us live in other places in a way that will preserve our planet as we know it, as we knew it uh, for the next generation. And um, uh, tourism is not uh, only economy, uh, it is people. Uh, and uh, I think you said that also, <laughs> Taleb. Hello, uh, Mr. Yes. Taleb. <laughs> uh, tourism is, is people, and it should remain for people, and it should be run by people. Thank you. I agree with you. So, yes, there is light at the end of the tunnel, and I think tourism brings light to our life, brings sun, brings joy to our life, to the life of every citizen and every person in this world. 
and also it brings some added value to our economy. So this is the mix, and I think we have a common objective to make our life beautiful, to create bridges between us, and, and to have stronger economy. I was your host for this panel, Claudia Zapardel, and I'm so happy to share thank this you. stage with you. Thank you so much. Thank All you. the best, and thank you to the organizers. Thank you. Thank you.